I've heard this before. <laughs> oh, I used this. I was confused for a minute. <laughs> I used it. Yeah! Right <laughs> Hello. We are in Hype Man Podcast time, y'all. Yeah! At this point, I'm just, I'm just running through it. I want to thank Aqua, yeah. the producer of our opening beat. Yeah. Justin, I'm actually fucking with no, you. It's, it's not, not Aqua. It's not Aqua. Oh, we, we, just always, we always used to say back in the day that if you can't afford Just Blaze, you call Aqua. Just, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> what is Aqua these days? I don't know, man. That was a question that, that's probably for other people. But no, That's I a question know. on no one's mind. <laughs> oh, Gee, oh, always man. a nice guy, Nick. <laughs> always a nice guy. But yeah, from the 2001 era of when you can't afford a Just Blaze beat, you call Aqua, Aqua. which was a joke that was already recycled because when you can't afford a Just Blaze beat, you call Kanye. Oh, man. That, that <laughs> I never was heard a, that one. Oh, sure you didn't. I didn't. I never Back heard in the day, you never heard that? Nah. Well, I, was, you, I used to stay in my bubble. You, know, yeah, I was you in, did. I was in four walls for like the past 12 years of my life. So yeah. I think I missed out on a lot of jokes. And Well, I think the thing, too, is that you were um, at, being part of like that little scene for a second. Mm-hmm. Uh, you were always really supportive of him. Yeah, yeah definitely. So even if definitely. you felt like he was doing stuff that was using sort of samples and stuff like you were doing, you were always really nice to him. No, I never, I never even felt that way. It was kind of like, because I, I did what I did, he did what he did, and while there were similarities, there were a lot of differences. And I think some of the similarities just came from what we both grew up liking. Yeah. There's a lot of weird parallels, even besides the obvious ones in our past, from his job, one of his first jobs being at the Gap, and mine was at Aeropostale. Mm-hmm. Um, but those aren't anything alike. <laughs> <laughs> but to to a lot to a lot of people they were because it was like if you couldn't afford Air Pastel you got Gap. Yeah, you know. Oh, so you're um, saying you are better than him? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was that, and then it was like we both kind of got our start with the same people. Like I came in with Mace um, with that our Harlem World album, and so did he. Excuse me, and then um, obviously both made our mark through Jay. Right. Um, you know, so there's a lot of parallels, but I think we just grew up, we grew up a lot, we grew up the same way. Yeah. In a lot of different ways. Um, you know, middle class, single mother, um, you know, uh, just in our conversations, we realized there was a lot of similarities yeah. to our path. So it's not surprising. We both love Wu-Tang. Yeah, I was going to say similar influences, obviously. Yeah. 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 You know, so, and they just kind of manifested themselves in different ways. Well, here's an important thing we should do is introduce oh, yeah, what's probably. going on. Uh, we have guests. We are extremely honored to have who Jeff, Eric, and I all consider uh, top, I, I arguably say the top producer uh, working in hip hop over the past 10, 15 years. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, but easily on all of your list of top three. I don't, I, 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 I'll, I'll fight anyone who says anything different. No, right. We're here with Just Blaze. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Producer extraordinaire. Thank and, uh, you for the kind words. Appreciate no, it's it. It's true, man. It's true. Definitely. And I, I, I'm Jensen. I'm here with uh, with Jeff and Eric, the Rosenthal brothers yeah. from It's the Real dot com. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's 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 a pleasure for us to have you on here. And uh, we'll start by saying I don't think any of your beats sound alike. I heard um, that I said something on a blog that said that two of your beats sounded like. No, it wasn't that. It was something to that effect. But, but I always like you. I, I know. That's why I was very confused. We, uh, Just, Just Blaze and I uh, were both hired to be consultants on NBA Street. No, was it Street or Live? Street. Well, no, we was, did live together. But, right. but then we were hired to go consult right. on, on and do uh, NBA, uh, NBA me, Street. Me, you, and 50 Cent. Yep. What year and was this? 2002? Two, three, 2002, three. And you and I went with 50 Cent, and 50 Cent, which I'm sure you have better stories than I do, <laughs> 50 Cent gets about 15 miles from the airport? Yeah, that was <laughs> at that. most. And uh, <laughs> like Mounties showed up to, yeah. to deport him. It was him. actually because of Yale, I think, though. It wasn't because of him. Really? really? Yeah, what happened was, if I'm not mistaken, there were a whole bunch of people um, flying into Vancouver this particular day. Yeah. And um, everybody had the same story. You know, they ask you why you're there. So you're like, oh, we have a meeting with EA about, uh, you know, such and such. That is so my alias the next time. <laughs> and, <laughs> and people kept showing up with this story. So I think by the end of the day, they had heard too many people with that story. that They were like, oh, no, something fishy is going on here. Yeah. So they, that's when they really started checking. At the time, when you crossed over at the border, they didn't necessarily check everybody's criminal record. Mm. So many people crossed the border with that checking. story. They, yeah, they started checking and they found something on Yale's record. And you know what could that have possibly? Been? <laughs> How and did that happen? <laughs> and they were like, "All right, that's it." And he gone. Yeah, they they, gone. they they said, "Uh, you guys, you have two choices. You can just drive back, turn around and drive back now, <laughs> or you can um, we'll let you stay for the night. But if you're not 
on the first flight out back to the U.S., like first thing in the morning, we're issuing warrants, uh, federal warrants for all of your arrests. Oh my God. And the best part of the story is that all of us are outside the hotel and 50 Cent walks up and at the point, 50 Cent is on is bubbling, but Wanks is like not out right yet. right there. He's Wanks right is not there. out yet. Yeah, it's right after Columbia. It's when, it's now, no, no, it's not right after Columbia. He's now back in, and working for a deal. Right. Yeah. So like the, the mixtape's really hot yeah. and uh, there's talk that Dre might end up really getting him it was like yeah. a, but he was really close and you knew he was next to blow yeah. up but he was super nice yeah. <laughs> and that's the one thing I remember most about this trip is that this dude was super kind and all we all I knew about him was was obviously the Mad Rapper song right. but on top of that I knew that um, he had been shot nine times right. Right. so you have like no idea what you're gonna do and the dude was just like it's good to meet you and right. it was just like hand down I was like yeah. oh. and then when he gets to port he's like see you later guys <laughs> like totally just a normal he's human. Curtis Jackson yeah, I, yeah. I, I guess at this time and it was uh, it was really funny and he was bummed man I think he really wanted to play around yeah. at EA so yeah. it was kind of like a, and it, it was thing. cool. Be all, you know, for for everybody, it was like a trip to actually go to those place where all of these games were made and just hang out and yeah. actually get paid to be there and consult. Sure. On yeah, something. and being with Ju- and being with Just Blaze at EA headquarters was like uh, getting the golden ticket to Willy Wonka. <laughs> I mean, this dude, it was like it was cool for me to even see. I mean, I'm a right. video game head, but I mean to see him uh, be there and have EA explain NBA Live and all this shit to him, it was it was it was pretty awesome. Yeah, and and you a, went home with a tester PlayStation, right? I went home with a lot of things. <laughs> you went home that, with, with a PlayStation that you that. The the only PlayStation you could play tester games on. So he got one from them. Yeah, I told him that was I was like, listen, I'm not doing this unless you guys give me <laughs> the the beta test PlayStation. Yeah. And they were like, what? Those things cost ten thousand dollars each. And I was like, it's cool. Yeah, it's no big deal. It's yeah, fine. and they and, and to this day, actually who's whose house is that sitting in? That's at Sneaker Pimp's house, sneakerpimp.com. Joe, give me my PlayStation. Back. <laughs> the tester. And uh, yeah, we we uh, my my claim to fame is that I got they uh, they reminisce over you at the beginning of NBA Street. That was a that I was a my you, consulting. I group. remember when nice. you made that call. Yeah, I, they said they were like and, ju- and just obviously was like that's a great idea. And then they were like, okay, that's cool. Like when I said it, it was like <laughs> I remember that when you and, made that call in a yeah, row. I was like, we should do that beat. And they were like, yeah. And then Justin was like, yeah, we should do that because that's a great. And yeah, it's just, good idea, Just Play. Uh, and then they had me. There's just ten thousand dollar gaming system. Then they had me. I think you remember this. They had me go into the studio and freestyle lines about every basketball player. Yeah, I do and, remember that. And if you are a seminal white rapper who got a deal because Eminem was hot, <laughs> and then having to do that in front of your favorite producer is one of the shittiest feelings in the world. It was just like, and they were like, "Okay, now Kareem," and I was like, "Kareem has goggles." Fuck, just blazes here. There was like nothing I could do to make it sound dope, but he was super nice, and I never said beef. If anything, maybe I made a joke, and and it was yeah. taken wrong. But I've always thought you're fucking the best. I mean, if- yeah, well, that's what it was. I was very confused when I saw it because I was like. Yo, the last time I saw this dude, we were kicking it at E3. There was yeah, no totally. issue. Totally, and I yeah. t- we were two way all the time. Yeah. and know. then I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Hey, listen, yeah. bro. Listen, bro. Whoa. Number one, I think it's more embarrassing to say I had a two way as in the pager than even to pretend we had a three way in, in Canada. I think that's even more embarrassing. I was talking about the two way. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. We had two way pagers, yes. Yeah. We, I was a 2000 rapper. Just plays continued. I failed in those years. So you have to remember I was stuck with the two way. That's what happened. The page writer. 2000 yeah. X. Well, you know, we can we can move on from my from my EA Sports. But listen, always one of my favorite producers. Never never Thank one you. of those things. I think Kanye bit him. I'll say it. But whatever. Beef squash. Beef squash. <laughs> uh, but you know, we we do this podcast, and it's really um, three Jewish kids talking about hip hop. And mm-hmm. if there's one producer that white kids seem to oogle over, uh, right. it's just plays. Oh, there's no question. Uh, and so you know, we we kind of we have a format we usually go by, mm-hmm. uh, but we're just gonna kind of ditch yeah, it. Just, just go over today. shit. Yeah. Go over shit we wanted with you. And the first being. Um, we are big Dipset fans. Okay. And as all white kids again. Right. Um, and we. <laughs> That's we, an interesting phenomenon. Oh, it's yeah. it's huge. Yeah. Uh, I think when we went to the TI show recently in New York and uh, Cameron Cam came, came out, out, I think all the white kids were like, yeah, and black yeah. kids were like, he's boring. <laughs> he's not making sense. Um, the picture with them and Dre that comes out yesterday. Yeah, that was very interesting. I, 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 yeah. I mean, I know I, I, I ran into Irv. Um, yeah, what's going on with that? I don't really, I don't want to put, you know, it's not my business to really put out, sure. to put too much out there, but I ran into him and we had an interesting conversation just about the possibility of me working with them again. Like, you know, oh, please. It was, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. You know, it's like, it's. Is there bad blood? It's so old at this point. It's kind of like. It's not even bad blood. It's just like one of those things where you just say it is what it is. Yeah. There were a couple of incidents, nothing, nothing major. Um, and then I just, I heard an interesting, uh, what do you call, what would you call that? A recollection of how 
Cam got the old boy beat from their perspective, which was, and it was totally not the case. It was this, they had this whole story where they kind of ran up in the studio and they were like, yo, <laughs> give me that beat. And I was like, okay. Right. You know, and I was like, dude, what it didn't, it didn't. Not so much. Yeah. It's no. revisionist history. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, um. Well, if I listen to music, you owe him one. Isn't that it, what he said? You says? know what's funny is that I put that there. <laughs> um. He and I never could figure out what I owed him for. <laughs> I think I've heard what you owe him for. Which? I think you gave a beat to. Oh, who is it? He said he had a beat. Oh, rock the mic. He definitely never had. Okay, a beat. but I've definitely. heard him. I've heard from their camp. Not like not that I hang out right. with them right. in <laughs> interviews. I think I've heard that they thought they had rock the mic. And no, that, they definitely couldn't have thought that because okay. I made that for Freeway right there on the spot in right. Miami, and he did the vocals. That was the first record me and him had ever done together. Right. And we did it right there on the spot. I okay. made the beat. He did the rhymes, and that was that. So it definitely wasn't that. Um, but actually, how Old Boy did happen, um, I had originally made it, and Bleak was there. And he was like, nah, uh, it's, 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 that's whack. So I said, okay. <laughs> so I left it alone, and then I played it for Jay, and Jay was like, yo, that's crazy. Hold it for me. But then he wasn't recording for like nine months. Right. So Hip Hop, um, who was one of, you know, the head of A&R at the time, yeah, yeah. Right. had the CD. And when Cam and them came in the studio one day looking for beats, um, he, he was the one who had it in his book of CDs. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, either him or Guru called me and were like, yo, they're about to um, play Cam and them the old boy beat. Is that cool? I said, yeah, go ahead. You know, um, and uh, by the, th this was around four. By 5.30, I'd gotten to the studio and it was already on the radio. <laughs> yeah, like literally, they took it, did it, walked right to the radio station, no mix, no nothing. Yeah. And I think that was actually the the first issue that we had was that I was going to try and flip it where we didn't have to use the sample mm. and before they went and released it to the radio but being that Cam rushed it into the radio and it was such yeah, a big no choice. hit yeah. we had no choice but to clear it and it took so much of the publishing right. we had an issue was it a bitch to clear? no it wasn't they well I mean they, they exposed it before they went for the clearance yeah, right. that right. gives them the ball right. yeah. once you do that it, it's over the, the publisher can come back and say we want 100% because technically <laughs> you're breaking the law uh, they didn't do that but they did take a large portion of it so I went back and was like well I'm taking you know I, I'm taking the lion's share of what's left because if it was if you had waited a day yeah we could have had it 50-50 and that would have been that no right. no sample clearance needed um, so I think that was probably the beginning of the start of the little bit of tension between right. us and then it just it, it spilled over from there and some words were said you know over the course of a couple of months but I mean I've seen Cam since then and it hasn't really been an issue it's just not what it was it's one of those things where you're not necessarily mad about words that were exchanged right. at a certain point but it's just you know you guys aren't really cool like that anymore right you know so um, I've seen him since then it hasn't really been any issues but the relationship isn't the same, yeah, same. sure and then I, I just have to you know I have to be mindful of where my uh, my you know my valuable relationships are. Of course. You know, and when it's like, you know, the relationship with me and Jay, even though Jay, Jay's a businessman, so at the end of the day, if I went and did something like that, you know, I got in the studio with them, right. he would probably just be like, all right, well, business is business. They're going to pay you, they're going to pay you. Right. But I would feel a certain way. How do you feel you were depicted in the Fade to Black documentary? I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone asks you the same fucking question. It's got to get boring. That was crazy because it was, I, I, to this day, haven't seen that movie. Really? Because I know how it was depicted and it wasn't the case right like the beat that I played him in the studio wasn't even the beat that they have me playing him yeah um in the movie is not even the beat that I played him really yeah they uh at the last minute I guess well at some point when I don't even want to say the last minute but when they were editing I guess they had um I want to say it was somebody from Mark Ronson's crew mm. do um a lot of the score or whatever yeah so the beat that I had played him had a sample in it but instead of calling me and just saying hey come up with something else that we can put in its place they just had one of those dudes do a random beat really yeah so I'm like I saw a little bit of that clip and I was like dude but that's not what I played him why are you what what was why can you could have just called me right. and I could have given you something else that didn't have a sample in it right. and you could have right. just overdubbed that into the audio. Yeah. Um. So I I definitely was a little salty about that and then the fact that PSA, um, the making of it wasn't included in the mm -hmm. movie. Um. I was I was definitely a little upset about that because if you go back to that album, that's the ones when you go back to 2010. Yeah. That's pretty much that and encore are the only two songs 
that you even hear from that album. Sure. At this point, you yeah. know, and that song in itself is kind of like the hallmark of that album. Yeah. They it's went. Not, it's not the Madonna song. You're not hearing that. Anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> DJ Quick, right? I mean, come yeah. on. Yeah. And that was a. Uh, that's it's funny because that when we did um, what was that song, uh, with the Isley Brothers sample, that got put on like American Gangster, um. I'm so bossy, bitch, get off me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, that was actually supposed to be for the Black Ignorant? Album. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ignorant, yeah. Yeah, and that was, that was um, at one point we were debating using that instead of the DJ Quick record. Wow. Would and have been then, a good move. <laughs> and, 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 I, heard that, I heard that that song was going to make it because they thought they would get Madonna. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's what I was really? And, and they thought the, they were going to get Madonna to do the hook, and really? then she backed out. I think it was the last minute, last yeah, minute there, yeah. there, was, there was like an issue. I, I don't think it was a thing where she just backed out. I think it was a thing where like she was, wherever she was, she wouldn't have been able to get the That's vocals. what it was. Right, 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 you're right, you're right. right. It was yeah. that she wanted to do it. She always wanted to do it, yeah. but it was timing, and they had to turn it in, and it was over. Yeah, and no, they were that, stuck with a record that kind of didn't make sense for the record. <laughs> it was kind of shitty. Right. Yeah, and then, you know, it, it ended up seeing the light of day like two albums later yeah. because it got leaked. That was funny. There was a dude, there was that. Early this morning, and one of the Timberland record that um, were recorded around that time, and they got leaked. I guess a year or two late. Actually, no, Ignorant didn't get leaked um, during this time. Early this morning, and this other Timberland record got leaked because there was an engineer that used to work at Baseline, and he made himself a CD or whatever of those two songs. And then went to Philly and lost the CD. Yeah. Not that little white kid, oh, is it? Nah, I heard about this. Uh, I like that kid. Uh, yeah, it was an older, uh, no, no, not him. It was an uh, older uh, Dominican dude. Okay. Um, he made himself a CD, went to Philly, lost the CD. Mm. <laughs> it obviously got bootlegged and leaked right away as soon as, you know, whoever found it, found it. And um, that, uh, I'm getting my stories crossed, but um, that was the only reason that anybody ever heard the song early this morning, which was never even finished. It was just one verse. Ignorant got leaked because there was an artist that used to work with Juan who owned uh, Baseline and works and does 4040 with right. Jay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was an artist he had who found the song in Pro Tools and made himself a CD. Oh. <laughs> and um, and then Bleak's old DJ, DeMarco, lied to the kid and was like, yo, that song they played on the radio yesterday. You got it on a CD? He was like, yeah. He's like, yo, let me get it for a mixtape. Oh, and he was like, I don't know if I could do that. He's like, no, nah, I'm saying they just played the record on, on the radio <laughs> no. yesterday. So then he got his hands on a song and put it on a mixtape. And that was always crazy to me because I'm like, yo, you're kind of in-house. You're Bleak's DJ. Yeah. You should know better than a leak, <sighs> an unreleased J record. I mean. Um, and, and the thing about the Fade to Black, we'll, we'll stick on for another second, yeah. Yeah. is um, something that I've always... I guess I've always liked about you as as a producer is that um, when Kanye, because I watched both you guys, mm-hmm. I mean I literally watched both you guys right. go. Di- it was crazy. Right. I mean I watched Kanye come up. I wa- I was talking to you. I was talking to him. It was just this weird thing where coming from the same camp and it was fun to watch. And he was so ready to rap to every waitress that yeah. you know this because we would uh, we yeah. hung out. Uh, he, any waitress who came up, he'd rap to. Right. It's not a joke. Right. Any any like hitting mm, on them? No no no. He no. Just, just to impress and he, them. he would rap any opportunity he got any to chance. anyone who would listen. Any mm-hmm. chance. And uh, we were at times. I, I'm not going to out people, but we were at times where he would leave the room and then people would laugh at him. Yeah, yeah. And people who were big time names in hip hop. Right. He was not a serious, people were joking. Uh, it right. was a joke. And he would rap to people and then just had this thing where he was mindful of who he was in public. He wasn't there to be a star. He wasn't there for you to see his face. He, you were going out of your way to not be known. Right. At the time I, we, we were talking. Right. It was like even if people, he would never put his face out there for people to see him. Right. Um, and the, the fade to black thing was weird to me right. because it pulled this wall down about the video games. Right, right. I thought. But it was, but see, even that scene was, the, the whole basis of that thing mm-hmm. was something that was like, it was a result of something else. Long story short, MTV called me and wanted to talk about my work in video games. Yeah. And I was like, all right, cool. So And that's really the only way you can get Just Blaze at that time, I think, to do an interview is if you talk about video games. You weren't, nah, ta- you weren't talking about music that much, though. Well, you know, I, I think it was just the thing where EA had put up so much press around mm. the fact that I was doing a bunch of video right. game work for them yeah. that that became like the little the hot story of my sure. moment right there. Yeah. Hmm. So I did um, an interview with them and... Um, and there was a, a friend of mine owned, owned a store um, called uh, Multimedia One, which was uh, over on St. Mark's Place. Mm-hmm. And it was basically a collector store. Um, old gadgets, video games, toys, whatever. Mm-hmm. So they wanted to film a segment where I went down there and bought something. Mm-hmm. So I said, all right, cool, let's do it. 
So while I was there, he had a bunch of, uh, you know, I had a little bit of money in my pocket and he had a whole, you know, it was, if you were a video game collector, they had everything, ColecoVisions and televisions, <laughs> Ataris, all that. Yeah. So I was like, you know what? Just give me one of everything. Mm-hmm. So I bought like half of his stock <laughs> just on some kind of like dumb out. You know, I never had any of these when I was a kid. Yeah. Mom, moms couldn't afford it. I got 5000 here. here. Here's two. Give me one of everything. <laughs> yeah. So I bought it, went on my way, and then MTV did a piece on that. So I made a joke during the editing, and it was actually a minion, Miss Info, yeah. was, uh, was kind of the one doing the interview. So I, I remember I said a line in the um, in the interview as a joke. I was like, yeah, I just make beats so I can buy video games. Right, right, and then right, I said, right, And then I turned it. to her and I said, yo, don't let them like use that for real. Like uh. That's going to look crazy. And that's the first thing yeah. in this interview that they, they splice it to say, hi, my name is Just Blaze Edit, and I make beats just so I can buy video games. Uh. And so Jay saw that on MTV that morning, and he called me, and it was kind of like he was just taking a jab, you know, just because we had a yeah, kind of relationship. He's serious, yeah, right, and he's right. like, And he's like, yo, we over here trying to make this classic final album. You on MTV talking about Xbox. That's why you work with me? Boom, boom, boom. But he's just being Jay. Right. But the way they edited all of that up, right. Made it look like I was serious and he was serious, and that was the reason why I wasn't around for the recording, the beginning of the working on the album. Yeah. When the truth is, I was sick at the time when they first started. Really? I was there for the beginning, then I got sick, and then I came back later on. So, to this day, I still have to shake this whole thing of you buy, you make beats just to buy video games, and I'm like, yo. You can work at McDonald's <laughs> and yeah. and have a decent enough salary to go pick up Call of Duty when it comes out on Tuesday, you <laughs> yeah. know. But I've had to, you know, deal with that ever since, and it gets kind of it got so annoying to a certain point where I started turning down. And I was gonna say because it sucks for me because I had known a personal side of you, and I was like, right. that's the fucking thing everyone's gonna take home from this documentary right. is right. that yeah. is that he's into video games. Right. So I it had was the, like the worst possible. Well, the other thing that they would take is like Timbaland like chugging down chugging that like, milk out yeah. of a car. Yeah. 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 That was wow. <laughs> he plays he plays uh, three beats or something, and the first one's the best one that Jay doesn't take. Yeah. Well, and did, then no one like, ever raps on it. L- no, didn't Luda take that no, one? No, Luda took the potion. He did. Oh, the potion. Oh, yeah. Potion. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is it. Jay that Jay actually has a song to that. Really? Which is is crazy. I guess maybe he did it afterwards, or maybe they just didn't use it in the film. Yeah, yeah. but I I heard it. Fuck, um, that's weird. I didn't even notice. Pass that to us, then we can. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. Listen, I'm not saying we're Bleak's DJ. I'm and saying we're kind of Bleak's DJ. <laughs> <laughs> and Jay's got like his disgusting face on, like Ooh, really, yeah, 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 the nasty yeah. thing. No, no, the song Ooh. he did to that was retarded. It's funny, like I, if you know, it's like just um, being around for so long and then ending up owning Baseline. Like if I could put out just the amount of unreleased stuff uh, I have just from everybody, crazy. it would be the craziest album of all time. Well, I mean, what are the chances of any of that stuff coming out? I mean, I've put stuff out here and there, stuff that like I'm cool with putting out. Like there was an, a, the original version of I Really Mean It, mm. right. um, which I put out maybe uh, in very low-fi quality a couple years back, which was like, hey, uh, it was actually going to be a Jim and Jewel's record. Really? And then Cam, and then Cam walked in, and I was, and he was and like, ruined it. He, <laughs> he was like, oh no 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 no, you guys, you guys can leave. Right. And uh, you know he did what he had to do, but he killed the record. Um, but I put that out a couple years ago, and I think there was an original version of Rock the Mic that was originally Oskino and uh, Free, uh, Freeway and Oskino, mm-hmm. and no, it was Sparks. And if you, there's a couple of clips floating around on the internet of me and Sparks arguing <laughs> from some documentary that Dame was supposed to put out, mm-hmm. and that was the start of that. Me, him getting taken off of Rock the Mic was the beginning of the me and Sparks, not beef, but just issues. issues yeah. yeah, like he always had this thing where he was like, you know, I'm, I'm not worth giving beats to me and Oskino. You can't do no beats for us. And yeah. I'm like, dude, I'm working on six albums at yeah. once. Right, yeah. right. Like, you guys aren't even officially signed yet. It's it's all love. Yeah. But it's just as a priority, you know, that we got to do things in. Or priority order, we got to do things in. And, yeah, you're um, definitely not working at priority. Yeah, right. Like, yeah. And <laughs> that me, would be bad. Me and him had just had a ton of issues that started with him getting taken off around the mic. There was also, flip side was originally Freeway and Oskino. Um, and I think I might have played that on serious the same night I played Exhibit C oh, for the huh. first time I think I played that I played a few things that night but Exhibit C being played just overshadowed Obviously. everything else right, yeah. that I like I played a Buster and MOP record I didn't that had never been heard before mm-hmm. and a couple other things but Exhibit C just kind of 
pushed everything else to the wayside because people were going so crazy. Well, yeah. I guess I guess we'll move then into yeah, this. Yeah, like a transition. It, when, if ever, I, will... Yeah, I could word this even better. Yeah. What the fuck is going on with Jay Electronica? <laughs> what, what, in what, in what, you gotta explain him to me. Because there's, this is a human being who, who is making incredible music. Mm-hmm. You're obviously at the helm and making great music with him. Mm-hmm. What? What am I missing? <laughs> what am I missing in the fa- sense right. that we're not I, putting... I, I first want to say that, and, and I, this is something that I, I, I can't discuss, but I, what I will say is that some, Jay is probably going to have the internet going crazy. I mean, crazier... Than it, Paul Wall? Yeah. Not crazier than Paul yeah, Wall. That's impossible. Yes, there, That's impossible. There is something coming. Pause. There is something <laughs> coming. Um, that... And I'm going to leave it at that. That's yeah. fine. Um, I think um, it's going to be sooner than later. And this... Excuse me. This is me talking. This is not like when you... This is not the such and such is coming in two weeks. I don't I don't play that game. I always tell artists, I actually had a discussion with Jay this morning and I told him, I said, one thing you gotta notice the way I move, I just put it out when it's ready. I don't talk about it beforehand. Right. Like that's one of the things that made Exhibit C so dope is that I wasn't on Twitter or on whatever right. saying, yo, in two weeks I'm gonna play yeah. this record. No question. No, I just walked up to the radio station and played it. And that was part of the magic of it was you didn't know what was about to happen. Yeah. And all of a sudden, you just heard this record come in out of nowhere and you were just like, oh my God. But at the same time, that's what you didn't like about what Cam did. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, but he's in, he's in no, control. No, I'm, I'm just this. Right, yeah, but, yeah. but this is a situation, right, that I was in direct control because yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. it's my project, course, or partially yeah. my project. Right. Yeah. Um, so me saying this, understand that it's real. There is... There's gonna be something fresh coming out very soon. Would well, you like us to hold this this podcast for a year? <laughs> no, 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 no. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. No, no, no. no. Um, also, Anna, but um, just in regards to that whole situation, you know, Jay's an interesting dude. Um, he, um, and I have to say one thing that I will say, and, and I say this with all the brotherly love in the world. Um, in regards to him, you got to remember this guy. When I met him, was homeless, right. literally. Yeah. Not even, not even homeless. And you know, some people will give their story about how they were homeless, but they're just sleeping on friends' couches yeah, right. and whatnot. I'm talking when he says sleeping on the Ave out in the rain and sleeping on the train. He, dead serious. Right, right. So for somebody to go from that to all of a sudden walking into a Grammy party and they're playing the Drake record, and then the next record is your record, and you have the Quest Loves and the Jay Zs and the Drakes and the Little Waynes of the world singing the words to your record like it's and it's the hottest thing in the world at the moment it's a mind blowing thing right. it's yeah. a it, total mind fuck yeah. yeah and it takes some adjustment to go from sleeping on a train to all of a sudden being the hottest celebrated MC of the year yeah. it's like it takes some it's, there's some adjusting that has to go through that and everybody handles sure. it differently yeah you know um, and I think with him it was uh, he was always used to operating on his own time his own schedule and all of a sudden, it's like, no, you, you have a responsibility to fans, um, to a certain degree, to the media, and just to your friends and, and everybody who's been here for you for this long. Yeah. Um, it messes with your head a little bit. You know, and I think everybody had to ha- has to handle it in a different way. He's also said recently, you know, he was, uh, I think he said something on Twitter to the effect of he's sick and tired of being scared or something like that. Um, and it's true. It's like when you hit that mark where all of a sudden you most most artists you gotta remember what most artists don't have to go from A to B to C or whatever to get to Z yeah he went from like A to X yeah in the course of a day yeah with one record so and there's also a thing where it's like alright we have a bunch of material but is it just as good or as be- or better than what we just dropped and um, I, one thing I will also say is that being a concern, um, there is something to be said for even if every record you put out is not as good as Exhibit C. If you just constantly keep giving the people material, mm-hmm. you kind of whet their appetite. Appetites. Um, at the same time, you can also take the approach of saying, "All right, we've put out two records, two real records, yeah, two real in 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 a year and a half," um, and it was almost like it was a weird situation because. He didn't skip a beat somehow. Like he put out Exhibit A and it got a good response and it was, you know, critically acclaimed, waited nine months, whatever it was, and then put out another record and it was almost like 
there was no space in between. Right. So look, he's he's got that somehow he's got that magical thing where people are patient with him to a certain degree, you mm-hmm. know, and there because when you put out such a seminal record, I think it's what it is. When you put out such a seminal record like it was with Exhibit A leading to Exhibit C, um, people were listening to those records for so long right. that it was like. I guess he got a little bit of a pass because of it, but he knows that time is of the essence. And we had a two-hour conversation this morning in light of some other things that have happened. Mm. And um, there's, there's going to be something fresh coming out very. I have a question. Than Just later. a question, and this is this could I, you could say no if you okay. want, but I think by his face we could. Is it would this song that's going to make the internet go nuts? Would it come out on? A, would it come out on a Friday? <laughs> No. Okay. Okay. So, I mean, uh, it could, but not because of a reason. No, not okay. because of, not, not because on purpose. not because of that reason. Okay. I, I may, He's I'm not going to be working with Nicki Minaj for Pink Fridays <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, or Blue Mondays. Or yeah, Blue Mon- <laughs> yeah, we got to come up with a day. We we got. It's funny that Kanye's doing that now. Um, I wanted to kind of try and do a similar thing with him, leading up to Act Two. But uh, see, this was the other thing. Um, uh. Because we wanted to get other people involved in Act Two, we were kind of stuck at a certain point waiting on other people's things, mm-hmm. right. or other people's verses. Yeah, sorry and, about uh, that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> other people's beats and um, or just you know other resources that we were waiting on, and um, some people, some of the things that they got us weren't really what we expected. So we kind of had to revamp and, and replan things. Um, and I'm, I'm just I'm trying. Yes, I'm, I am trying to be politically correct right now because I don't want to yeah. put people on blast, but. Um, it uh between that and also there was just an influx of all of a sudden him getting show money. Yeah. You know, it was like um every time I would talk to him, he's like, Yo, I'm out in London, I'm out in France, I'm out in Czechoslovakia. He was everywhere, yeah. 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 Um and again, from somebody who comes from having nothing to all of a sudden get an opportunity to get paid to do what he wants to sure. do. It's like you gotta let it, you know, go ahead, let him rock, find his own way, you know, and we'll we'll be here when he's ready and you yeah. know that kind of leads us to like I said the conversation we had this morning. This morning, yeah. Um, can we just go over a group of people who, over the past year, you're either surprised or not, uh, as far as they've come in the past year? Um, I don't. Know, give me some names and I'll give you some comments. Okay, Rick Ross. Are you surprised how far he's come in the last year? I definitely. It's weird. I definitely didn't see it coming the way it did or happening the way it did I've known Rick Ross since before he was a girls right, right. Um, Eric Sermon days yeah mm-hmm. um, you know like uh, back in I don't know 2099 whatever it was so I'm definitely super duper proud of him cause um to, you know just to see some from any he was the guy that was just he was just cool Rick he just used yeah. to hang out in the studio he was just a cool dude that used to just come through you know um, and hang out with everybody I mean he owned Summer Jam I mean, he came yeah, out there and just summer. destroyed. Yeah, it's yeah, true. Summer. Yeah. It's everywhere. So to come out and see it happening the way it did, and for it to happen three or four albums in, that just goes to show these record labels, I think, where it's like they usually bank on your first week sales of your first album, right. and if you don't do it then... Not to say he didn't do it then. He, you know, he's had successes, right. but just not on the level that he has now. Most labels expect you to come out, do this, be it, be it, be up top, and then just kind of coast out and die down. Yeah. He's one of the few artists that, with each album, has built up a bit, which is how you're supposed to do it. And he had that huge valley. I mean, what could have been a huge valley with yeah. the whole nail in a coffin. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah. With, with the whole with the you know, correctional officer. Thing. Exactly. When the CEO thing happened, well, a lot of people alleged, alleged, right? Alleged yeah. CEO yeah. thing <laughs> happened. A lot of people, I think, counted him out at that point, and then he somehow came out swinging and just embodied everything and um that just really shows what you could do you know when you when you have not just um a good not just good music there's a lot of people who make good music right but good music and the right hustle to back it up right you yeah. know what i mean i mean you, let's not forget bmf was a mixtape record yeah. right yeah <laughs> you know i wasn't even on his album at first you want to give one i can give one you can go first uh ti it's, it's int- uh, I, that's so good one it's a it's a hard one to, in light of just what well, I'll just say that. I'm I'm disappointed. I was. It's, it's uh, to see you know. All right, l- let me, let me go back a little bit. Number one, I think he has the best Ti record. I think just I think just has the best Ti record. Thank uh, you. In my, in my mind, I'm not a Ti fan. There's a bunch. <laughs> I love that record. I know I'm saying the single, obviously. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the the uh, it's interesting with Ti. Like when was, I'm not even talking about the recent events of what's just happened. Yeah. Um, but just even going back a little bit further. Um, where uh, with the records he's been putting out lately, um, and 
I see, you know, I'm on the internet all the time, so I see some of the mixed responses. Um, the crazy thing about Tip is that when he got out of jail, he literally went into the studio and recorded. I don't think he really wrote that much while he was in jail. Mm -hmm. I think he just waited till he got out. And he literally recorded within a matter of just a couple of months, like 70 songs. Um, and I think he just got to a point, you know, a conversation that me and him had yeah. where he was just like, yo, I've rapped so much. I've said so much. I'm trying to figure out which way to move next because I think he was, he just had so much to get off his chest being that he wasn't writing while he was in jail. Yeah. He came out and just said it all and did it all. But it's almost harder when you record 70 songs to pick the right 10 or the right two right, or whatever right, it is because right. you have so much good material to choose from like he's got such a wide range of records from really good street records and really good introspective records and a couple of smash singles but when you've got 20 of each type right you know it's harder sometimes to sit there and pick the right few to really run with and i think that was you know the last time i spoke with him that was the predicament he was in um uh, was that he was just he rapped about so much and did so much it was hard to pinpoint what to pick from now so I think while most people say it's great that he's come out and recorded that many songs it it harkens me back to Jay working with him in the early days when he would never do more than 15 songs Yeah, you know because he was like that's actually the way Blueprint 2 came about was because um, uh, him Guru kept trying to push him to do more songs and do more songs and he was mm -hmm. like I don't want to so then Guru baited him with Life After Death is the best double album of all time <laughs> and, and then he was like alright I gotta go. Do, you know, I, I, let, let's do it. So it's Guru's fault. <laughs> I, I mean, I guess Blue. I, I, I personally think Blueprint Two would probably be a great. Um, I mean, they, and they went ahead and did it afterwards. They did Two Point One where they scaled right. it yeah, down. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, would have yeah, been yeah, way sure. right. would have been a great. I, I still think there were certain songs they missed on Two Point One that should have been on there. I don't remember what songs are on there, what songs aren't on there, but I think there were like maybe like two more that should have been on there on Two Point One. Right, and there are probably two songs they could have taken off. Sure. Of that, um, but I think if you took the best fourteen songs off of two, off of two, it probably would have been just right under one. But anyway, the original <laughs> point was sometimes it's not good to do sixty or seventy songs, you know, and then try to pick the best twelve or thirteen out of that. Yeah. Right. Um, all right. Uh, I was gonna say shine, but I I, I, so I, I don't I don't boring. care. Yeah. yeah. I don't hear um, it. So Joel Ortiz, great one. Joel Ortiz is killing it right now. Um. It's funny, you know, like to go, it's kind of like, uh, maybe not to the same degree, but I kind of liken that to like Wiz, mm -hmm. where Wiz got off, got dropped by Warner, right. and then got hot. Right, right. You know what I mean? Kind of the same thing where he was on Interscope before, mm -hmm. and his he started to find his success after he left the label. Right. He definitely sounds more comfortable. Yeah. That's oh, yeah. for fucking Well, sure. I think oh, because no a lot of times, I think labels, you know, when, when, you're, when you're a new artist, um, and you sign to a major and such a major as Interscope, Ugh. you there's a certain pressure <laughs> there. Yeah, are you yeah. speaking from experience? <laughs> yeah. I I just can laugh. <laughs> there's a certain pressure there to Beats by um, Dre headphones. Yeah. <laughs> to make a certain you know make certain records that you may not have necessarily originally signed. I wouldn't have done to anything. Make. I wouldn't have done anything. Like there's not a thing on that record, except for the song I did with Search. There's not a song on that record I would have done. Had it been not an interscope, really? Right. No, even the Kanye song. I, there's not. I mean, I worked with heroes of mine. Right. I mean, I, I quick. I worked with. Right. Um, no, no. I, I was completely. It's a hard fucking thing, man. Right. It's, yeah, it's, it is. Yeah, there's so much pressure in this advance, and and uh, you know you don't want to let down Jimmy Iovine. Sure. You, know, you don't want. There's so many things you're just like. It's just overpoweringly. It's very tense. And 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 now that I do other things, it's it's. I find my lane a lot easier sure. and, and you just can't find a lane when, when, and you have these people um, who are your A&Rs and stuff and it's like, they don't fucking care. They don't really care. I mean, right. they really don't and it, it, you get to a point where it's like, I, I, didn't, I, didn't, I just didn't want to do it anymore and that was where I kind of fell in and, 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 and Joel, I guess I can see in him a similar thing which is like now he has Slaughterhouse 
Right. He does it with his own thing. He does a mixtape. He sounds more comfortable. Yeah. And right. I, I never really wanted that opportunity because it wasn't for me. I didn't think that was really what I wanted to do in the long run. But like, if that was his thing, and now he's off Interscope and he's going to end up back there supposedly for the uh, possibly, shady yeah. slaughterhouse. Yeah, right. right. But it's right. but it's on his terms. That's doing what I'm what saying. He's comfortable. It's, it's doing. on his terms. I, and when I left Interscope, they asked me for an A and R job. They were like, "Well, maybe you can do an A and R job." And I was like, "You're fucking out of your mind." <laughs> but if I was, but if I wanted to stay in the business, it would have been a great opportunity, and maybe I would have felt more comfortable there. Maybe not. You know what? Well, it's it's funny because a, a, a lot of A and R's, not all, but a lot of A and R's were people who wanted to be rappers or tried to rap. Right. Um, a lot of writers also are. Yeah. You know, and it's like if you uh, can't find your lane one way, find your way, find your lane another way, and then there's always different ways you can change the game. Like if you were a rapper who didn't succeed for whatever reason, it's not necessarily a bad thing to take an A and R job because you may be able to find that next artist that can balance out. Mm-hmm. Good music along with what the label wants. You know what I mean? It's yeah. like, I think we all have our talents and sometimes we try to manifest them the wrong way. I know a couple of A&Rs who were rap, who tried to be rappers who failed but ended up becoming great A&Rs and I think that was their actual true calling. Yeah. You know, it's, wow. you never know these days. Uh, Joel's my favorite current rapper. Really? Yeah. Um, yeah Joel's dope. He's dope. Speaking of, uh, Joe Budden used to like almost signed to Rockefeller. No, there's a song. What's yeah, the song Champions. where they introduce when him? Just Blaze, yeah. yeah. Don't they introduce him? Did yeah. I have something to do with that it's song? It's Champions, no? No, no, it's not Champions. You have it. No, you have it because you gave it to me. I have it too, yeah. He, well, that was during that period where Dame was just kind of <laughs> going crazy. <laughs> like just grabbing everything? Oh, That's Rock it. Cafe. Yeah, Rock it Cafe. Rock Cafe. I the newest, the newest member of Rockefeller, yeah. Joe Budden. It's, yeah. it's a great like... You know, drop by by Dame too. Yeah, it's great. That's when he had like Joe and um, I think he had Nori and Samantha. Samantha, Samantha Ronson. Ronson. ODB. Yeah, OD. <laughs> and it was like for me, I kind I was kind of not involved at that point anymore. Mm. Um, it was just it was a weird time because it was like up until this point, you know, first it was just Jay and Bleak, right? Then it was Jay Bleak and Beans. Then it was Jay Bleak Beans in the mill. And then Who? it was <laughs> shout out to Emil. All right, fair. And uh, love to have her on the podcast if sure. ever possible. Yeah. Absolutely. Where is she? Um, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, she, I spoke to her maybe about a year ago. I want to say she was maybe out in Maryland or something. Yeah, I think you can find it on the internet. I think it does tell you where she is. I looked it up recently. Really? Yeah. yeah I think it was on the but it wasn't updated. Oh, it wasn't. No. She's in Maryland or something. She's, she's like something. you type in like where is Emil? No, it's like there's some way to find it. Oh, okay. Someone right. did an interview with her recently, and yeah. she did really? it. She did it over the phone. Yeah, she's like uh, she's like out in Maryland somewhere. She reached out a to kid, me right? just to. Was that? I think she has a kid now. Yeah, well, she had she had one. one before, and I think a she has a second one. Yeah. one. Yeah. That's right. That's what the that and she kind of left. You know, like it's funny. Like with her, I mean, there was a there were you know, there's always politics involved. But I yeah. think I was there more so than a lot of people um, when she was first working on her record. And um, one of like I said, there's always other situations. But the biggest gripe with her at the time was like when they were doing a the dynasty, they could just never get her to come through because she was always dealing, watching her kid yeah. that yeah. was always her thing like I don't have anybody watching my son and I used to be like well bring him to the studio yeah. then because not many you know like not everybody's gonna you don't get multiple shots Ugh. no you not that I mean? shot yeah. yeah so it's like we're doing this album where are you at and uh, it's funny she actually she actually her, what did they cut her verse off on you me him and her I think it's on my way through the tunnel like lady die and then they cut her off her verse actually had like she killed everything. She had like really? eight, eight yeah. more bars, maybe, but she she got cut down because it was just like she wasn't showing improving the way she she should have been. Yeah, and she um, gets shit on in live performances. Oh yeah, totally. Doesn't totally. Need a million gone, million yeah, yeah, gone. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, by the uh, way, she's in North Carolina. Oh, she's she's North Carolina. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, somewhere. Yeah. I knew it was somewhere it was. around there. But shout out to a million. You know, hope she's doing well. I mean, uh, I, but yeah. I want to keep talking about Budden for a second. Yeah, because that oh. would probably be someone we would ask what, about the last year. Of course. And and so uh, you obviously had his hit. Right. He's obviously changed a shit ton since yeah. that hit. Uh, he's more definitely a different rapper. Yeah. Um, and he seems to rebel, not against the song. He's happy about Pump It Up, obviously. But right. I think he rebels against people thinking he's Pump It Up right. now right. at this point. Well, and, and I don't know what your relationship is with him. I think you guys are friendly over Twitter, it yeah, seems, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. We, we, we still see each other every once in a while. Yeah. And we run into each other. Um, and um, I get that. I, I totally get where he's coming from with that because I don't think he like I, said, I don't think he shies away from pump it up, but he just he has to make it constantly make it known that that's not 
just that's not who he is at this point. Right. The same way I'm not that same producer who sure, made that record exactly. at that point either. It's like, you know, like, and people sometimes will ask me, when are we, we going to get that sound again? And I'm like, probably never. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I was 20, I don't know, three at the time. Yeah, I guess it's whatever. like asking Timberland to make another Skills song. Right. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's just, we're, you're in a different space and a different mindset. And um, at the time that, that, uh, there was that's what that was. I, I always tell people a lot of these records are moments in time. You yeah. know, Joe was just coming off off of Focus. I was just coming probably off the of like rock the mic or flip side or something. So mm-hmm. my, Focus my, is great. Yeah, yeah Focus great. was yeah. awesome. Yeah. My my mind was in a certain place at the time, and um, it was just uh, I had actually did the beat for Beans and Freeway. They didn't take it, and looking back in hindsight, I'm glad they didn't. Only because I've, the record ended up where it was supposed to be, right? You know, but I but can I go back to that place? No, the same way Joe probably couldn't and shouldn't go back to making another pump it up yeah. because that's not who he is at this point anymore. He's it's been seven years or so, and he's been through so much. Mm. You know, it's like he's become no, he's he's a different person. Totally. Now, you know, as, as you grow through your life experiences it should be reflected in your music it would be crazy for him after all he's been through to, to make a pump it up now. right yeah. fire was a was a fun song fire was cool it's funny because i still have you know every once in a while I walk past the club and hear it blasting out yeah. other clubs i think it, it the interesting thing about that record is it's kind of nowadays people rapping on four on the floor beats is very right. common yeah. yeah right but it was like we did that back in 02 or 03 right and it it hit just enough to be hot in the clubs, but not to get played out, so you can still play it now. And it's funny because now it matches right in with everything else that people are yeah. doing. <laughs> Would you say you're a Slaughterhouse fan? You listen to yeah, stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would. like Slaughterhouse. Cool. And uh, it's a, uh, it's kind of like Gravediggers 2.0. Hey, <laughs> I've already mentioned about eight times on this podcast yeah. over the last few weeks that uh, Six Feet Deep is my favorite record of all time. Oh yeah. Oh, easily. Yeah, it's my favorite record of all time, and that's why probably why I like Slaughterhouse so much. Again, second career shit. Yeah. Everybody coming out talking how they're be- they're bitter, but at the same time having a whole new look on shit. And I you love. love- you love concept albums anyway. oh, I mean it's my thing yeah. right. well, I think on. they were the most fun for us to work with what's that Slaughterhouse yeah yeah. I mean they, it was you know when it comes to like working with us we need people to buy in and like right. you know Cam really really bought in right um, and, and Slaughterhouse totally Clip, did Clips also and the Clips did uh, Slaughterhouse though like because the whole the whole basis of that was we were doing an EPK for like a boy band, right? The Slaughterhouse right. Group, and um, I remember that. I yeah. remember that. I remember and that. and to tell to tell Royce to five nine after the, the minute after he is negotiating with Charles Hamilton oh, not to go to Detroit, not to like fuck up his career, which, because he had said that Jay Dillo had produced his album. Exactly. Exactly. Right. album. We're in the yeah. studio, and he is telling him like. Don't go to Detroit. Don't say these things about Dilla. Don't say like, these I things about, about and then house he was, And then he was like, hold on, okay? Yeah. Puts his, puts his hand over yeah. the phone, right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> and we're like, and you have to throw roses towards the camera, and you have to blow a kiss, and right. he was like, all right. Yeah, no, because he, like, he was like, he was like, if you want to go, you know, come to Detroit, you have to go through three people, and I'm one of them. He's like, and there's killers out there, and don't fuck with them. And we're like, yeah, you know. Throw roses. Smile at the camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah no, no, those dudes, like, uh, I mean, just from hanging out with them and doing, you know, doing the, uh, like, the record we did with M, um, they are they're interesting because they're they're clowns at heart, you know <laughs> yeah, those dudes. Yeah. But I uh, it's weird you mentioned Charles Hamilton. I ran in the I ran into him once uptown. Well, so do we actually? Yeah, and he's seems like a regular cool okay kid. So mm. then when I see the things that he does and says online, I'm just like, we had a it's really, up to you guys. <laughs> we had a we had a really we had a really different experience with mm-hmm. him uh, on our way to to Stadium Red the other night. Oh really? Yeah, we ran like the train doors opened up and and he was right there and he was just not the same person no. at all that we had had worked with. Well, I've seen pictures. I guess that surfaced of him recently looking crazy. I mean, um, he's, he's in a bad place. Yeah, he's looked better. He's uh, he had on some crazy Jinko jeans, like the old like like the old yeah, right. raver jeans. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, I think Jeff and Eric's story has him in a in a Fisher King thing. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, he was just, he, he was looking extra crazy in these yeah. pictures. When I saw him, extra. I want to say. Three months, no, maybe about four, yeah, about four months ago, and he looked fine. He looked neat. He was cool. He was of a, a sound state of mind. I'm yeah. like, this is the same kid that did X, Y, and Z. Yeah. But I mean, I guess I mean, he's a apparently. I guess he's a former heroin addict or a yeah. drug yeah, addict. Yeah, yeah. And, bi- yeah. and bipolar issues. Yeah, yeah. Formerly homeless. 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 Yeah, yeah. fucked up. Like real homeless too. Yeah. But, um, but transitioning into less difficult people, but still difficult. Everyone knows that Dame Dash is is tough to work with. Right. Um, when he. I mean, would he record his his mixtape stuff at baseline? Would you be there for that? Would he jump in and and what was that like? Or was he just like? I'm trying to remember this. Um, 
he did some of it there. I think the early, early, early stuff. Like when I did... Oh, no, that was for the paid in full thing. I was thinking um, the I Am Dame Dash song. Oh, those are great. <laughs> I remember um, that. Jesus. He, uh, that was actually supposed to be the outro to Freeway's album. Oh, and so I think time-wise, we just never got it finished. That's why the record's singing, I Want to Be Free. Mm-hmm. Huh. And um, But, you know, he didn't care. He was like, I want to use this as, a, as, a, uh, as an interlude. And I said, hey, go ahead, do what you got to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, But, yeah, in terms of the mixtapes, I think the mixtape stuff started happening around the time where all, the whole split was going on. Yeah. So I wasn't around for a lot of that. Dame is Dame was very difficult. We had a huge falling out. Right. Um, and... Uh, it was funny because the the beginning of the of the end for me was when he got on the radio one day. We were all on the radio on Power, I think, and uh, you know he 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 likes to snap on people. So I was already hesitant on doing the show. I do it, and then as soon as I get in, he starts snapping, like talking about how he taught me how to dress and blah blah blah. So when I started snapping back at him. I guess they really weren't prepared for that. Because I, I snapped at him from an angry place. Uh, like, yo, you ain't going to get me on the radio and try to put me on blast in, you know, in front of millions of people. Right. So we kind of started going at it. And then uh, that got, I, somehow we got out of that. And I, But it kind of left a bad taste in my mouth because sure. I was, but at the same time, Dame, when my pops died, I, know I, I mentioned this somewhere else recently, when my pops died back then, he was probably the only dude who actually really pulled me to the side right. and was like talking to me about it and, you know, kind of trying to be there. Um, you know, just on a friendly tip. Yeah. And um, I think a lot of that had to do with probably with him losing Aaliyah because I think it was maybe around the same time. Mm-hmm. So he was coming from a place where he was like, I can relate. You know, right. you know, I just lost somebody. Boom, boom, boom. And um, that was really real because everybody else was kind of just like, yo, yeah, my condolences and kept it moving. Right. He was the only one who really was trying to make sure I was okay. Yeah. So it was weird to like see that side of him. Sure. And then just see the total arrogant like unnecessarily arrogant side of him um, coming you know come into play and then there was a point and it's funny because uh, he didn't really used to rock with Kanye like that earlier on and one of the key I remember he, he threw this in my face um, there was he originally asked me to do the We Are The Champions beat oh right um, and I was like, cool, I'll get to it when I get a minute. But I was doing like five things at once, sure. all for the label. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So I was like, yo, um, who do you want to put on this? What is this for? I'm trying to get an idea for a direction so I know where to go with it. And he was just like, oh, I just want to hear it. And I'm like, okay, well, cool. I respect that. As the pre- or CEO or whatever the company, I respect that you just want to hear it. Sure. But we have a Cameron album, a Freeway album, a, a Jay-Z album, a Bleak album. We're working on all a, a cam- you know, We're just working on so much stuff. Yeah. Um, I'll get to it at that point I'll get to it when I get to it then you know like not to say I'm never gonna do it but it's gonna take a second right so he's on me on me on me about it and I'm like yo like I'm working on a lot of stuff that's ultimately for you making you money but I will get to it so then finally there was a point where I did get around to doing it but I um I had left the beat at the house and I told him um he came in he asked me for it and I was like yo um I'm gonna uh I'll have it for you tomorrow he said alright cool no problem I ended up spending the night at the studio that night because we were mixing uh, the Cam, the Cam uh, Beans and Bleak record, Just Fire. We ended up mixing that all night, so I never went home. He comes into the studio the next day, asks me for the beat, and I'm like, yo, I haven't even been home yet, but I'm going to go home later on tonight and get it. And he was around a bunch of people, so he just decided to get in arrogant mode and start arguing down, you know, arguing and talking down to me. So I started yelling at him, like straight up just barking and then he was like yo I'm saying we ain't gotta take it there we ain't gotta take it there I'm like yo you took it there and I think it was a thing where because I'm normally quiet and reserved he didn't expect me to come out my face but it's like yo I've been here all night slaving away his record yeah to for a record for you and you're gonna come in and wanna show off in front of your people right. and exercise a little power no it's not going down like that so I got back on him so then it turns into this big argument and then Every person that came in the room that for the rest of that day, he was like, yo, this is just blazing. He's mad disrespectful, blah, blah, blah. So I'm like, yo, whatever. <laughs> I go down. My jeweler's coming uh, to drop off a watch to me. Yeah. He's downstairs. Um, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to run downstairs and meet you. So I go downstairs and um, Dame and Biggs and Claude, who's in one of uh, Dame's peoples and a bunch of the other dudes is all down there. So I go to meet the jeweler. He comes and he hands me the watch. 
Dame turns to Biggs and he's like, yo, this is just, uh, from now on, you can refer to him as just disrespectful Blaze, uh, blah, blah, blah. You know, he think, he, uh, he said, he, what he said, he said, uh, he think it's sweet right now. Um, like dudes can't get their jaws tapped. So I turned into him and I said, yo, it's just me. And you have all your people here. Right. If you want to tap my jaw, um, pause. Uh, if you would like to tap my jaw, now is the perfect time. It is just me. Right. You know, and then it was like, oh, now, 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 uh, see, I told you you're disrespectful. Look, you don't know how to uh, approach his elders or talk to his elders or whatever. And I was just like, oh, oh. Whatever, man. Mm-hmm. I'm out. G- give me my watch. Went upstairs. And, um, and, uh, from that point, I had an interesting conversation with Jay because I was visibly frustrated at that point. Sure. And just from, you know, uh, just from our conversation, that's when I was like, okay, yeah, something's about to go down. Because I could tell from his reaction that, you know, things definitely weren't right. I wasn't sure what was going on up until that point. And that situation confirmed it for me. And then I ran into Dame like a week later at a, at Richie's spot at a Butter. And he was like, hey, just disrespectful Blaze. Like trying to make a joke uh, out of it. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, awful. yeah, like, all right, you you clearly think like this is a joke, you know, and there's just a certain way that you approach people, a certain way you don't, especially when you go to the point of talking about dudes could get their jaws tapped, right? You know, yeah. like now you're taking it to the level of, you know, physical whatever, you know, and um, and I think again, I think he just it was something he expected me to kind of back down from, and I yeah. was just like, all right, well. And he and that's when he sort of like switched his allegiance over to Kanye. Well, yeah, oh yeah, that was that was the one thing that he said to me, because um, I did the beat, and actually I think we used to use the beat to close. We ended up using the beat to close down the Rock the Mic tour. Wow. Um, at the end of every show, but yeah, he said something to the effect of "Watch what I do with Yay" or something like that, Ooh. and I was like, "Oh, okay, <laughs> cool," you know. And I think on his first. Um, mixtape that's how this whole story came up I think on his first mixtape is where um, they did they had that the song that We Are The Champions song that right. Yeah, had did for him right, right, right. he wanted me to flip that and he wanted me to flip some El- Elton John record I forget the name of it possibly yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway so that was that was that story so another rapper uh, that we could talk about is Fabulous Fab. And you've seen him develop yeah, into yeah, a completely yeah. different I mean, person. Breathe has to be his biggest record I love his record that's a great Probably record not his biggest record but one of his best yeah. yes you but know, what beats um, it it's the one that like everybody's he he, he earned his respect Street, back. Yeah. Street, Street, Street wise, yeah. Streetwise definitely is yeah, right. one of his biggest records I mean. and he definitely earned a lot of credit as an MC. Well, what do you, I think what do you think's bigger than that for him? Well all the R and B records. Because the, yeah, 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 okay. the other record I did with him and Little Mo can't let you go. Oh yeah. That yeah. was probably I, I, not, not probably at one point that was the number three record in the country. Not a not on the R and B charts or the hip hop charts, right. but just yeah. number three overall. overall. Two hundred, yeah, yeah, yeah the, on, on the Hot One Hundred or whatever. That was the number three record in the country at one point. Yeah. Um. So um. And we've watched him go from yeah. a, a more street artist. I mean, I remember when I first met him through you right. and Clue. Right. And he was a street artist. Right. right. Between him and Kane and all these guys that were around him. Right. And then uh, now he's a grown man rapper. Yeah. And it's 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 a. Uh, I like I like I like the way he's grown. Um. Just musically, his music selection choice, the mm. fact that he's trying to do concept albums now. Yeah. Like I remember I remember having a conversation with uh, Clue, not with Clue, I'm sorry, with Duro about it, mm. where he was like, you know, where he was trying to steer that direction. Like, mm. we need to sit Fab down with just two or three producers and just make it a concept as opposed to just, because Fab's always had great singles, but you would never, you never used to hear, yo, the Fab album was awesome. Even though no, he had good songs, yeah. it was just... He as he got older, he learned how to make them cohesive. Yeah. yeah. So it's cool to see the growth, you know, and where he's at now. But he didn't have to water it down to do so. Yeah, I missed some of the punchlines. Yeah, but if yeah. you but then you listen to records like Lullaby. Yeah. The one that Al did that I did the scratches yeah. on, and he's murdering. He's murdering. I mean, throw him in the bag. Throw him in the bag. I listen, oh. Those verses are great. Yeah. It's great. It's yeah. great. Yeah. He, he can still do it. It's just I do miss some of the the Desert Storm Street stuff. I do. Yeah. Um, I also don't fuck with him Twitterically. <laughs> oh God. Yes, he's a Twitter monster. He's a, he's a lot. He's a lot yeah. to take. He's um, what do you think when you hear people like Lil Wayne jump on um, on uh, what was the first thing off Kingdom Come? Uh, the first. Oh yeah. Uh, Show me what you got. When when oh, Wayne jumped on that, I remember that, like what do you what do you think? Because Wayne killed it. He murdered. He that. really did. But see, it's like some, you remember that. Yeah, I, I remember it. that. And I remember he, some people like making the whole thing like who killed it better, him or Jay or whatever. And I'm like, yo, to me, it's two different approaches. Like if if Wayne had put that, let's say the Jay Z record never happened. And I gave that record to Wayne, and he put that out as a single. It wouldn't right. have done anything. No, you're right. right. Yeah. And that his would, lines, his lines totally make sense. 
because of, of, of what Jay did. Of what yeah. Jay did is that he took Jay's record and flipped it, but it was a, it was a hot freestyle. It wasn't yeah, right. a great song. He right, wasn't right. intended for right, it to be exactly. a song. So when people would try to ask me questions like who did it better or who which, which which one do you prefer? I'm like it's two different things. One is a song designed to be played on yeah. the radio and have a video and in Budweiser commercials. It. Right, yeah, right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is that was a, record, a strong move by the yeah, way. This yeah. was this oh, yeah. the, this record is designed to the, uh, designed to be an event from the way I put it together musically for a live band to perform it, yeah. and you know, just it was a picture being painted. This did you did you envision Danica Patrick in the in the? <laughs> no, I didn't. But I was happy she was there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah a good time. Uh, a thing that we could talk about too that um, I remember from our Canada trip uh, is that we were walking around and talking. Uh, we really didn't have much to do other than work during the down video games, <laughs> right. which is a fucking horrible job, obviously. Um, and you were talking about dance records, and this is this right. is in two thousand and one or two. And you were telling me that your history in techno and house right, and right, shit right, was, right, right. was really heavy, and that you would, you know, obviously you're a great DJ, which we I think we found out later, as far as publicly, we found right. out later. Um, and uh, you were telling me about these these techno records that you would come up, and you were, you were saying that you were trying to find, and I remember this vividly, right. that you were trying to find a way to implement it into hip-hop. Right. Which is funny now, because you yeah. did find a way to, to implement yeah, yeah, it into yeah. hip-hop. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, and it's actually, like, it's kind of come full circle for me, like, uh, like this past minute music conference, I did, uh, I did that with A-Track and Armand Van Helden. Yeah, and yeah. And uh, then at, obviously at the uh, Fool's Gold Christmas party, yeah, right. you know, it was just that whole set. And um, I, first, I was a little, I was a little nervous about, it. like, I wonder how people are going to react to this. But then I was like, you know what, I really don't care. Yeah, <laughs> you know, because this is a part of me, and anybody who really knows me knows that that side has always been there. Yeah, and you just only seen it in glimpses when I did records like the Joe Button record and stuff like yeah. that. But now it's just kind of like, it's a cool time. I think it's a cool time. As much as people complain about music, people have always complained about music. Yeah. Um, what in one shape or form or another? I think this is actually kind of a cool time in music because you're starting to see a lot more acceptance of different genres and different things kind of all falling together. Right. Um, like I was talking to, um, I was actually sitting. Uh, I had dinner with Armand Van Helden last night. We were talking about it. Where like six, seven years ago, you couldn't be. If you went to a party, it was either you went to a hip hop party. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or you went to a dance music party, yeah. or you went to I guess a, a, a reggae party or an electro party. Yeah. Now you go out and you will easily hear all of them across the board. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that's and thanks to night. you. That's thanks to Diplo. That's thanks. There's a handful of people who yeah. really just AM. pushed AM. I mean, yeah, there's yeah people definitely. Who really pushed the Z envelope. trip as well. Z trip. Ronson, is very big with there's that. a bunch of people who who really played both sides. Yeah. so well, and it's because our generation grew up. Not you know the, the guys who, who created this music in the park right. didn't really find as much in Zeppelin I don't think as we did well, no, you know I think, I'm, I'm not even going rock side I'm right. saying and techno wasn't even around right. so it's like right. we we were brought up on a much larger palette I think well no I yeah. think right. it's the Napsterization of everything yeah, totally yeah and that 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 created our palette I think the yeah, idea right. that we could pick up a single rather than going to have to sit through a whole album right we like singles we like one song from certain things and I think that shows in, in production like and that's like us. I think that's the, that's the plus side of, of yeah. that whole Napsterization thing but the downside is that you're not going to a record store anymore and digging through the crates right? and also also just uh, budgets oh sure yeah oh yeah well yeah that thing yeah <laughs> also that world hurt. Have, have you ever or what's what's the I'm sure it's happened more than once but what's the what's the most um, significant instance in your mind mm -hmm. that someone has taken a sample of something and you're like shit I could have had that first or, or um, you were working on it and you just didn't make it happen and someone else took it uh, I actually have a couple of those but the only one that's coming to mind right now is um, I did a I guess somebody just or not just but wrapped on the aloe black um I need a dollar. I need a dollar. Yeah. And I was actually working on that with T.I. Really? Right when that happened. And I had already gotten, uh, like, the, the I had already spoken to Aloe about it. I had got, he, uh, he was like, I'm going to send you the parts for the song, the wow. whole thing. And then somebody came along and rapped on it. And then a bunch of people ended up rapping on it. Um, but at the time, it was like, we were, if we had just worked a little faster and gotten <laughs> yeah. the record out sooner, it would have been cool. Now it's kind of like a moot point because so many people have done it. And right. It would have been a novelty thing. You know, like, or it would have, it would have had the same novelty. How is but, how is Aloe not hooked up with Kanye? I don't it's insane know. to me how he's not on a Good Friday song. I mean, it's like I don't get it. Well, maybe Jensen, Jensen went to college with that. Yeah, with Aloe, oh, really? yeah, he was a science genius at really? USC. Genius. I actually met him. I met him in Australia. I want to say four years ago, <laughs> three four years ago. Eminem. Uh, Do you remember that? What's that? Him in Exile from Blue in Exile. 
Him and Exile had a group called Eminem. Oh, yeah. They were no name backwards. And they were on uh, the MTV show that Left Eye hosted. I didn't the know cut, that. The cut. Really? It, yeah. Oh, wow. And he, they were the, uh, they came in second. Really? Yeah. You, I, well, maybe you can find it. Maybe you can't. But that, that's when they were at SC and they would, they would open for Hot Carl stuff. Um, people knew them from the cut. Wow. Wow. And then he was not a singer at all. Right. I mean, he's a rapper. Wow. So, you know, I, I'm super proud of the guy. I think, I mean, yeah. I'm super, super proud. I mean, when I first met him, he, he, he looked up with Stone Throw, but he yeah. hadn't had anything really right. going on for no. himself yet. And, um, but the funny thing is the way he, he, in spite of his success, he's still so grounded in certain ways. Like I was, I was speaking, I was giving a, a master session and giving a panel uh, or a, a discussion um, at the ASCAP uh, uh, convention late last year or early this year, mm-hmm. and it got to a point where it was Q and A for the audience. And as I'm picking people to ask me questions, I just picked this one random guy, and he's like, "Hey," and he asked me this <laughs> question, and I'm like. I know you from somewhere and he's like I'm Aloe Black awesome. and I was like dude what are you doing in the audience like yeah. you could be giving your own yeah. right. seminar but you're in the audience ask, you know, yeah. here to ask me questions yeah, I don't right. mean to out him he was in the top 3% of USC what's wrong with that wow. he was in the president's class I mean that? I don't know how bad yeah. he wants to know that so, I mean oh, okay. he was in a class that was hand selected by the president of USC wow yeah wow. He, one summer he didn't rap because he was testing frogs for human really? diseases and stuff yeah he's out of his mind I mean he's, he shouldn't be rapping he should be saving our lives right <laughs> but All he's right. an amazing singer wow. so hope, thank god he is we have, we have five more minutes have left five so minutes. if we could just run through like question, questions really quick yeah, yeah. Um, what were your thoughts um, when you first uh, heard that, that Gucci and Talib wanted to work with each other I sent the tweet out I said yo I'll do the beat if, if anything yeah. I, I don't that that I'm all for stuff like that and I get why Quali would do it like um Sometimes you just have to turn your turn the game or your game on its ear right, and right. just do something different, um, because you know one issue that we as New Yorkers um, and fans of underground hip hop, we just have this like snobby attitude to a certain degree when it comes to certain things sure. about music. And that is part of what has killed us to a certain degree because we we used to tend to turn up our noses at other parts of the country. Sure. Yeah. And then years later, it came back to bite us. Totally. Right. Because we l- began to lose relevance while they gained prominence. Right. Um, but we have to realize the same way, the same way that we grew up on an Illmatic or a Wu Tang, or even go back earlier, a Just Dice or a Karis one or whatever, sure. or they're, Mims. Right, right. <laughs> there are kids in other parts of the country who grew up on other things, yeah. right. and to them, that's their hip hop. Yeah, and you it's, know what it's I mean? weird that we a lot of us. I mean, me too. All of us have problems grasping that. Right. Like when we hear Soldier Boy, it's a fucking joke. Mm-hmm. When they hear Soldier Boy, that's who they're being raised they listening to. Yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, yeah, and for good reason. Yeah. I know. I, I get that. I get that. And that's probably my question is about Soldier Boy. It's um same thing. You know what yeah. I mean? It's like a. It's kind of it's hard to hate on a 17, 18 year old kid yeah. who found a niche and and ran with it and found a lane and made a ton of money doing it. And for his for his fan base for his generation right. is that dude. Yeah. It's hard to imagine somebody saying yo to that generation. Soldier Boy might be their KRS one. Oh. But it is what it. But it's yeah, true. It's true. I get right. it. I you know agree. what I mean. So it's, when you have when you look at it in that from that perspective, yeah, you can't really be mad at it. You just have to say it's it's not for me. Yeah, you know. Um, but don't. I think we try to hold, um, hold uh some of these guys to the same standards that we hold our heroes to, and we can't because it's a different time, a different place, and a different yeah, sound. Sure. Yeah, and when I met Tyga, he didn't know who Camp Low was, and at first that made me hurt a bit. And right, but then I, how would he? But how would he? Why right. would he? Why right. would he need Why to? Would he? Why would he need to? And I told him that to his face, like, don't fuck. And then you got, then I saw him the next time. He's like, Camp Low is amazing. <laughs> right. Air. Um, I will say one thing, yes. just really quickly. The, the one difference is, is I think there's a different reverence with the younger kids for today for the past than it was with us whereas for me I was hyped to know Public Enemy and then go back to my mother's old James Brown records yeah, and, yeah, find, and find the loops and find the samples not important that, anymore yeah that's yeah, not important anymore no. and that being that that's always kind of been part of hip hop history for us that's one thing that I miss or that I feel down about that that reverence is gone. Yeah. yeah. You know, but other than that, I mean, it just kind of is what it is. It's moving. Yeah. Um, uh, Jeff quickly, last thing, yeah. yeah. Um, Jay Electronica mm-hmm. uh, has aligned himself in some ways with Diddy. Mm-hmm. There have been rumors of him aligning himself or, or Birdman wants to sign him. 
I've heard. Well, anyone wants to sign him. I don't think but anyone wants to make money. I, w- I would like to know, hypothetically, who would you rather have, uh, Jay? Well, see, the whole thing with Jay, um, and we can maybe close out with this yeah. because we're running out yeah. of time, is that a, his one of his biggest missions and our, our, our missions is to just do things and succeed on our own terms. Yeah. Um, and one of the reasons why you haven't heard of him signing a major deal is because he's not he's not going to sign the, the slave deal. Right. He's too he's too much of a grown man. I mean, what would it look like somebody 33, 34 years old signing the seven album 2 cents an album right, deal? Yeah. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? Like he's not going to do it at this point. Right. Yeah. He's making a decent living touring and just put you know putting out records himself or ourselves. Like if you look on a on iTunes, you download exhibit C, it's just Bla- the label is yeah. Just Blaze slash Dog on Society slash um, Decon. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Um, just doing it ourselves, yeah. and I think there's going to be a situation where that, that will be elevated a bit. Cool, but he's not going to sign. He's I'm saying right now he's not going to sign the Your traditional deal. deal. Yeah, right. he's not yeah. going to do. He's it. not going to sign to Birdman. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, not in the sense of of I am not a cash money artist no it's not, not happening <laughs> oh gosh Jay Electronica <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> on that note <laughs> uh, guys it's I mean this, is, this has been let's the pretend best. he's not here for a second yeah, right this is a fucking dream come true podcast it is it yes. really is the fact that you know we didn't sit here and make jokes all the time like we normally do we sat here we got through some shit that we probably wanted to know as nerds and uh, I'm sure there's a, a, a good amount of people listening to this one more than other ones and realizing Hearing shit from our favorite producers yeah. is a pretty big deal. We really appreciate it. Yeah, and Thank I, you for having me. I, I, think, I think we all have a lot more to ask, so we're hoping that, that you can come back one day again. Yeah, yeah definitely. Okay. Awesome. This. Awesome. Right. Again, I mean, this has been Hyde Men. We yeah. appreciate Just Blaze tremendously coming. I'm Jensen. I'm Jeff. And I'm Eric. Thank you, guys. We'll see you next Wednesday. And Just, one more? You want to say something? Bye. All right. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. See you, man. <laughs>